Hey everybody, and welcome to Steelbook Obsessed. My name is Jake, and today this is kind of an off-the-cuff video. I did not plan to film anything at Goodwill when I made my last trip, but I found one of my best scores ever at Goodwill, so I had to kind of show it off, and uh, it's something I've been looking for for a very, very long time. I found a 4K UHD player <laughs> used at the Goodwill. It was $8. It's time once again to hit up Goodwill and see what goodies are going to come my way today. Hitting up their physical media section. And uh, yeah, it look it's looking pretty stacked. And there's a nice Blu-ray section in here as well. But I always look at the players when I'm here. And oh my god, I found a 4K player out in the wild. Are you serious? This is only $8.99. One of my best finds ever, and the movies weren't too shabby either. I'll kind of give you a breakdown of what the actual model is in this video. I'm going to hook it up, see if it plays well. I'm going to try to do like a comparison, because normally my player for my OLED downstairs is an Xbox Series S. I think it's pretty decent, but I kind of want to see if the 4K standalone player kind of stands up, stacks up a little bit better than the gaming console. We shall see. I've always heard that like, yeah, you need a standalone. It's going to look a lot better. Well, let's actually put that to the test, shall we? If you like this type of content, make sure you like, subscribe, share. This should be a fun one, a different one. Let's get to hooking some stuff up. Uh, yeah, let's get to that now. Yay! I found a cheap player. Yay! So on this trip, I found a 4K movie, Hotel Transylvania 3. I only had the Blu-ray, so I picked it up. I saw the 4K. I'm like, one of these days I'll find a player. I also found Elvira's Haunted Hills. This is a great double feature, if I do say so myself. But the big heavy hitter is in the bag right here. Let's pull it out and see exactly what player I found, huh? And here is the player in all of its glory. It's a Samsung Ultra HD. As soon as I saw this on the shelf, Ultra HD Blu-ray, I'm like, no freaking way. There was no price tag on it. So they just gave it to me as a player for $8.99. The type of player that it is, let's see if I can get that. I'll zoom in a little bit here. UBD M7500. Don't know if that's good or not, but let's, uh, let's plug the sucker in and see if it even works. Okay, so I decided to put this Samsung player right underneath my Xbox Series S, so I have two 4K players hooked up here. I plugged it in, the power button is lit up and I haven't pressed anything yet. This sucker did not come with a remote, unfortunately, so I bought one on Amazon. I have a warehouse really, really close to where I live, so I got this within 24 hours of me ordering it. This remote was like $7.50, so almost as much as the player itself. This isn't a bone, buddy, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna put a movie in here and see if the sucker power's on. Let's see what happens. All right, here's the HDMI that it is on. Let's press the power button. It's blinking. It's got a blue thing now. It went to Laserdisc. It's back to HDMI 4. Here we freaking go, people. And Frozen's in here. Is there a bonus movie in this player? I'll take it. How long does it take to open up? Maybe. Takes a while to open up the drawer. Is the drawer even gonna open? Here we go, bonus frozen in 4K. Thanks again, Goodwill. But I'm not gonna test it with this. Ooh, that looks, look how fancy that looks. Ultra HD Blu-ray player insert disc. I've not had a Samsung player before, so uh, hopefully this is a good one. The movie that I am going to test it out with though. Oh, that's all the way over here. Excuse me, pardon me. I know what you did last summer. I have not seen this movie. I've wanted to watch 4K for the longest time. I think today is the day that I actually pop it in. So let's see how good the sucker looks, huh? All right, the disc is now in place. Let's just tap this sucker. It goes. I still have to test out the bagged remote here, put some uh, batteries in the sucker and see what happens. Insert disc, is it gonna show? Oh, it's just gonna play automatically. Okay, let's see what happens. Ooh. I know what you did last summer, hey! Okay, so moment of truth time. I put some batteries in this remote, pretty basic looking remote. Let's see if it works and boom, it is. How amazing is that? In total, I paid $15 for the remote and the player and I got a bonus Frozen 4K movie. Life is pretty good. Check your Goodwills people. That's, that's the last thing I have to say. But now let's do some picture comparisons just to see if a standalone 4K player is gonna look better than a gaming 4K system, I guess, system player thing. So this whole experiment cheap find on my end has kind of been a bit of an eye-opening experience for me. I always thought that my Xbox Series S was a great 4K player, but that is really the only experience that I've had with the format. I've never had a standalone 4K player. I have the Xbox Series S for downstairs for my OLED, and I have the PS5 
For upstairs, for my 4K TV, it's just not OLED. I thought both of them looked great, but of course I want my OLED to absolutely shine. So I hooked up this model, this 7500 model from Samsung up. And while it doesn't completely blow the Xbox Series S out of the water, there are some noticeable increases on a standalone player. I am a little bit shocked on that. The main thing that I could see was the black levels always look great, but there's more of like a crispiness to those dark scenes. Like I, the, the main thing that I played was I Know What You Did Last Summer. And number one, the transfer on that movie, oh my God, it looks phenomenal. Very, very good. Like you do not think a 90 slasher would be considered one of the better 4K transfers that I've seen. Definitely in the top 50 scenario, the top 50 I've ever watched. Um, it looks great, and the like they're camping, not camping, they're just kind of at a campfire site by the beach. Middle of the night, you got the ocean kind of rolling in, you have the fire sparking, so there's some nice shadowy effects that kind of pop up on people. The Samsung player was better. It was able to kind of like make the visuals pop more than the Xbox One was. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm glad I found a cheap player so I can finally say that yes, I am a believer that you should find a standalone player if you want to get the best picture quality possible. I know that a lot of people already have that mindset. I was not cemented in stone, but now I actually am. Now that Xbox is probably going to be a streaming device. I have not tinkered around with the Samsung to see what type of apps I can actually get on the player. But the Xbox, that's the main reason why I wanted it. It's a great entertainment hub. It has so many different apps that you can just go back and forth from. It's just, it's clean. I, I like a clean interface. And I feel like the Samsung isn't gonna be that. But uh, for disc-wise, disc-wise, that is going to be the player that I use for now on. I will not pop another 4K into the Xbox. Um, yeah, so I am very happy I found this player for $8. I got the remote for $7. I had the HDMI cord already. So for around like that $15 range, I was able to get a player. I will pop up what they are selling right now on uh, eBay, maybe Amazon. Uh, they're a lot more than $15, <laughs> I, I will say that. So um, I guess I, once I posted the TikTok video, the short form, the... Uh, just the social media video. I've had a few people reach out and say, yeah, I was lucky enough to find one of these at my local thrift store as well. So moral of the story, if you're in there and you're looking for movies and stuff, you never know. Look at their electronics section and see if you can find that diamond in the rough, grab a cheap 4K player for yourself, and hopefully you are able to kind of either have another one or like a bedroom beater, if you will. Um, yeah, just, I'm still kind of in shock that I got it for this cheap, and I always look at the electronics. I will continue to as well, and uh, I'm going on vacation here very soon. I plan on hitting up a lot of thrift stores, so if you like that type of content, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, because there's going to be a lot of that coming your way, and sometime later this week, I'm also going to do another thrifting video that I did with the gang of blue tubers that kind of came to my neck of the woods and I showed them around. So that should be a fun time as well. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see ya. Hey everybody, how's it going? Jake here again. I'm trying to put some like secret scenes at the end of my videos. Normally it's kind of like outtakes of uh, what I'm doing, but I have a question this time around. In the comments, if you got this far, let me know you got this far. And the way you can let me know is by telling me what are some of your favorite 4K transfers you have ever seen personally. I have two that are like my main, main goes to every time. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I think that transfer is criminally not talked about enough. It looks amazing. And then the second sight transfer of Drive. Oh my God. That's the first time to where like, it was like one of the first five uh, 4K discs that I popped in and it just looked amazing. My jaw dropped and it made me a lover and believer of the 4K format. So if you have any experiences like, like that, let me know in the comments. Thank you and uh, yeah. 
be on the lookout for these bonus extra after credit scenes from me. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha.